Well, hey YouTube, we are supposed to get some snow on Friday and Saturday, and they're saying six to seven inches. Well, I got to get the tractor ready, so that means put the plow on, put the snow blower on, and uh, hopefully get some chains on the tires and be ready. Uh, it'll probably be wet, slushy, nasty snow. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm going to plow it anyway. So that means the first I need to do is get my plow which is up in the rafters that's where i store it i'm confined to a, a two stall garage and uh i don't have much room so i keep my plow up there as you can see i have a chain hoist and i have a couple heavy duty four by fours that span a couple rafters that are holding that up so it's uh that's got to come down so and then i'll get the tractor in here and uh We'll put it on and get the snow blower in here and we'll put that on and got to take the mower deck off and uh, it's just going to be a whole lot of fun. So let's get started. It is, it's not a land pride. It's orange, I know, but uh, that's just to match my Kubota. It's actually a Frontier uh, back blade, six footer. Uh, but it was originally green. Well, green and Kubota orange don't go too well together. So I did uh, prime it and painted it and, and uh, made it look a little fresher. So. It's not the best back blade. It's kind of a cheap frontier back blade. It used to be on a heavier tractor and you can tell it has a little bend in it. That's what happens when you hit culverts, I guess. But it'll do it. Does does a good job with my BX. It's about the right size. Uh, I've often thought about maybe getting a seven foot, but you know, if we get a really heavy amount of snow, I think seven foot is just be a little too much. So yeah, this is a Frontier back blade. Um, never been a too big of a fan of the Frontier brand, but it it works for now. So anyway, it's time to get the tractor. All right. Well, as you can see, I've still got the mower deck on, and I needed to take the pins out, which, as you saw, was really easy, because all I do is I put this all the way down to the bottom, so it's at zero, pretty much, which means the deck gets lowered all the way, there, so I don't have to struggle with it. The pins come out real easily. Then all I got to do is reach back here and pull the drive shaft out, tuck that to the side so it slides out and then there's a the front pin all right so I got my loader upright danger danger shouldn't go under there so I'll, I'll try to lead by example and stay out of there a little bit pull that out and this is free I don't need that anymore now well, gotta struggle with this okay Danger, danger, going under the loader. That's giving me too hard of a time, guys. There we go. And there. Alright, as you can see, I got the car out of here. 
lights will shut off pretty soon. Remove some stuff. Make a semi clean garage floor for this mower deck. Because there's no pins hooked up, it's just free. It should pull pretty easily right out from under the tractor. I'll show you how I do that. Grab right here. I don't even turn the wheels. I don't need to. They'll slide on concrete just fine. No problem. The mower deck is loose. It's okay. So I'm just gonna move over there. Move it over there for the time being. Um, I like that mower deck. It's a 60 inch. If you're getting a BX. There are two options. You can get a, uh, what is it, a 48 inch or a 60. Get the 60. It's a few hundred dollars more, maybe, I don't know, it's probably. And uh, you can cut that much more grass. It's a great mower deck. Plus, if you get a 60, you can put on wheel spacers like I did. Uh, I got wheel spacers on my tractor. I think they're two inch. Uh, you cannot put wheel spacers on if you have the shorter uh, deck because this gets in the way. So, now you learn something. All right, next, I'm going to hook up the back blade and then we're going to drive over to the shed and we're going to hook up the snow blower. But we are going to load the snow blower using front loader. We'll bring the snow blower in here and then we'll drive the tractor and we'll go put the loader in the shed for the winter and then we'll come put the blower back on. It's it's a process when you have a tight space but it works. Just not very well. There. I like this uh, hitch bar, draw bar, uh, three point draw bar with this. It's made by Titan Attachments. I think I got it on Amazon. I, and I know I paid probably $80 for it, but it is heavy duty. It's all half inch steel. Uh, works great when I need to move the trailer, or you know, it's just kind of nice to have on the back of the tractor instead of the three point assembly moving all over the place. i just put this on instead. It's just as easy. So that's coming on. There we go. Down there. If you haven't seen my toolbox on my other YouTube videos, here it is. 30 caliber ammo box held on by a couple U-bolts, 3 inch U-bolts. Works great. Love it. It's, I painted it to match the ROPS and uh, it is handy. It's waterproof. See, I, I just keep a little chain in there, a really small light duty chain. And uh, a couple wrenches and sometimes some pins. Sometimes Sometimes a snack. So, comes in handy. Uh, another mod I'll show off is these mirrors. Um, I don't know. Paul Short, I think, was probably the first person ever to do them, and now everyone copied them. But I, I don't use them as much as I thought I would. They're handy to have when you're backing up and you need to look behind you. But I don't know if they're in the best location. I think if they were up... A little higher maybe and I've seen a couple people do it uh, I just haven't seen anyone do it really well yet but anyway golf cart mirrors let's move on it's about tractor stuff time to go get the snowblower
set. It takes quite a bit of doing and shuffling around to get everything set up for uh, getting the snowblower on, but uh, first I gotta take the mower deck off, I gotta put the back blade on, I gotta I gotta take the loader off after I bring the snowblower in the garage with the loader, uh, get that put away, and oh, and don't forget about the the quick hitch assembly. Uh, I think that's what that's called. So now, before I can even put that on, the grill guard has to come off. Uh, I suppose Kubota doesn't think that you're going to be you know, plowing through the brush in the winter time when you got the snowblower on, so I guess we can do without. But I would like to see them come up with some sort of solution to where this can stay on and you can also get that quick hitch on. Uh, not that taking this off is a pain, it's just an inconvenience. So this is four bolts, got to do that first. All right, as you can see, I got the grill guard off. Now this is the assembly and you can kind of figure out it has a wedge system. It's wedge blocks rest on top and then you just tighten it up, crank it down uh, as evenly as possible. And of course, there's a few pins that go into, so I don't want to forget about those. Better pull them out. And there we go. Okay. Now, I had a trick last year trying to get those pins in, so I'll see if I can do a better job this year. The problem about doing this once a year is you forget where it goes. problem at all. And a two pin. No other skinnier. Better behave pin. Oh, why in the world did I struggle with that last year? I don't know, but I do remember that I needed to have a hammer help me out. So apparently it's only a once every uh, couple year problem. Well, I'm just getting that good. Next, next I better tighten this up before I forget. So, a couple turns on this one. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll give this one a few turns. I think we should just hand tighten them. I don't want to put a wrench on them or anything. And that's pretty good. That's not going to go anywhere. All right. Uh, this is a little locking mechanism. As you can see that little deal there, it grabs the, grabs the snow blower and pulls it in tight. And then there's a pin that's going to go in there. The pin's on the other side, so we're going to put that in now. Just a way to ensure that you don't lose your snow blower while you're trying to plow snow because that would be bad. Very, very bad. Okay, snow blower's on. I do have some hydraulicals to hook up stuff. So, you can watch how exciting that is. Super exciting, right? There we go, it's one. And two. There. Put this through there. And I think 
I did a little zip tie on these last three, so I'm going to grab one of those. Just extra insurance. And just zip them together. That way they can't individually fall out. They'll all have to fall out. Good. And just because I've got OCD, i got to clip this. There we go. Nice and smooth. See? No sharp edges on the zip ties when you get them. Nice and close. Yeah. For those of you wondering what a BX2750D snowblower is like, it is like this. Here's how the hydraulic chute motor looks. Uh, I really, really like having a hydraulic chute. Okay, I don't have to have a up and down, but just the rotation left and right. Uh, it saves so much of the manual crank back and forth. You don't want to do that. That gets a little boring. All right, since winter is upon us, just about, I don't need these earmuffs anymore. Since I'll be wearing a nice warm hat, and that is enough sound dampening. Uh, this snowblower has been used for two seasons. And if you're wondering why it looks like it's in such great shape, that's because at the end of the season I paint it. I make sure that I get all the rust off of it that I see. And I, uh, I give it a good coat of uh, Kubota orange. So it just keeps it, keeps it looking a little newer. Um, let's see here. I got a little ding in it right there. Last year I hit something pretty hard and I bent this bar. And I ended up having to bend it back. Plus I turned this bar over, in fact. Here's the back side of it. It's just the wear bar. But I bent it right here. I don't know what I hit, but I must have hit it pretty hard because it bent out quite a bit. And you can see where where it wore off underneath. But it's ready to go this season. I made sure to take care of uh, any maintenance issues at the end of winter. You know, during the, before spring, before I got to put the mower deck on, or while I was putting the mower deck on, I took care of all of that. Uh, so I was ready to go. And uh, I'd like to be able to do the same to the mower deck, but I just sharpened the blades not too long ago, and I think they're going to be okay heading into the spring. I'll give it some grease and uh, make sure that everything is working like it should. Other than that, it's a good little tractor, good little snow mo mover. Um, I think I'll get those uh, snow chains and put them on anyway. What I'm doing, when I put chains on, I just drape them over. Drape them over the front, far down to the bottom as I go. Make sure they're even all around. And then I'm going to back the tractor up right over them. I don't know if this is the same way you guys do it, but it's the way I do it. It never hurts. Maybe it even works better. I already did the other side. Okay. The tractor is officially ready for winter. Got chains on, got the snow blower on, got the blade on. We are ready to rock. Now, I want you to see how I keep my chains topped. I put a little bungee all the way around the outside of them. That way they uh, don't rattle, make a bunch of noise. Works really well. Um, I've got LED light bar up here shine my way. I've converted my headlights over to LEDs so they're pretty bright. Uh, let's 
see, I'll just give you a little show here. There's my headlights, nice bright white. The noise you're hearing is a fuel pump. There's my LED really bright light. Got some backup lights. Two of those working. And this year I added strobe lights. So check out my strobe lights. I got one in the, with the parking meter or the parking lights. Hazard lights, I should say. And on the front. We're ready to rock. Ready for some snow. Bring it on, Minnesota. Bring on winter. All set to go. So if you're looking for a nice place to store your mower deck or your snow blade or anything else, don't rule out your rafters. They might come in handy.